Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Sofa Star. I'm your host, Jeffrey Iqbal. Uh, unfortunately, last week I couldn't make it, so I hope you guys were nice to Garam Masala. He said he had a great time, and somehow he wants to take over the show. But I told him that um, maybe we can bring him back, I'm not sure. And New York and Japan. Welcome to another episode of The Sofa Star. Without delaying anymore, let's just get right into the eliminations. What's up, everybody? I Hi. feel like we're getting smaller and smaller, and this is actually nice because now I can actually start interacting with you guys. Before the groups were so big, I couldn't, I couldn't recognize who was who and what was going on, and now like the pictures are slowly getting bigger in Zoom. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great. Thanks. Doing great. Thanks. Yeah. Good. 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 Um. So here we are again. I don't, I, you know, this is like the worst part of my week. And, um, but hey, I mean, I guess it's part of it. I want to ask a specific question now that I see both your smiling faces. Um, let me ask you guys. So do you guys live together or how does it work? You know, with, with, no, 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 no. Actually we live in a same colony. Okay. Uh, he's two, three houses next to me. Ah, so then how did you guys meet? Uh, Actually, no, no, that is musical purposes, but uh, same colony uh, growing up together. So it happened like that. So you guys live in the same colony. You guys, what, just like randomly were playing cricket together and was like, hey, I sing and hey, I play the dolak. Or how did it like, how did it no, come no. together? Actually, my grand grandfather uh, used to learn tabla from his father. Ah. So basically the same blood, you know. Uh, so he's also a percussionist and I disco kind of discovered him. Kind of. Well, take, you're not taking the credit much, are you? Um, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. That's awesome. So that you guys live in the same kind of, cause I was wondering, I said, you know, like with everything that's going on, you know, so how is it? Let's say what, who's, um, Praveen, what, what part of, uh, what part of India are you from? Where are you living right now? I know that you said your, Actually, your father's a military father. Yeah. Yeah. I live in Ahmedabad. So he's an ex-serviceman. So he got retired in Ahmedabad. So we are settled here only. So you, um, uh, uh, what's it like over there? Is there, is there a lot of like, um, challenges when, when you're leaving your home? Is there, are, are you allowed to go out and drive around or what kind of, what kind of restrictions? Are no, there? Right. Yeah. Right now it's completely locked down here. I mean, it's seven days curfew here. So we are not allowed to, you know, go out right now. So it's completely locked down here. Situation is getting worse and worse again now, Delhi. So, yeah, that's it. Everyone so in your family prepared. has been good. Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah, they're fine. So Everybody's some good. good. Some good news is, you know, last week we we heard that you were the number one. I guess you had the number one vote, so you were crowned the Sofa Star of the Week. Um, yeah. Were you Were you shocked? Were you surprised? Was there? Yeah, I was very much surprised. I mean, I didn't expect that. So I was very much surprised, yeah, yeah. actually. So yeah. you'll, be, you'll be surprised to know that it's happened twice. You once again, oh <laughs> you have the most, the most oh votes and you are again the Sofa Star of the Week. Oh my God, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> so now, no, don't say thank you to me. So now this is your opportunity to say thank you to all those people, those hundreds and hundreds yeah, of right. people that voted for you. So what do you want to say to them? I just you know would like to thank everyone. I mean, whoever took some time out of their lives to vote for me. So actually, it means a lot to me. I mean, I have never been in a contest like this before. So, lot to me. Yeah, I feel blessed right now. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and you know, just just to let you guys know, and I think we've, I think uh, it's been explained, but um, each of you are are kind of on the chopping block. We don't know who's going to make it. We don't know who's going to get eliminated, but um, one by one, you guys will start dropping out of the calls. And as you are taken out of the call, that basically means you're safe. And then when we're left with however many people left, um, that's who we're going to be eliminating. So if you fall off the call and those of you that are at home that are watching this and you see someone disappear, it's a good thing. So yeah, buddy, you, you are the Sofa Star of the Week and congratulations, man. This is, uh, that's huge. 
so there was another, um, there's somebody else that was also um, from a military family, right? Arpita, didn't you mention that you said, I think I remember you said, I'm an army brat. So what, what does yes. that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like with all the discipline, waking up at five and six. So, yeah. You wake up at five in the morning? <laughs> uh, yeah. I used to, like before this quarantine thing, but yeah. So is that something that you like to do or is that something like your dad would turn the siren on and be like, Urja! <laughs> Nothing like that. So I am a swimmer and so I swim like I go to swimming like at 5.30 and 6 and Urja, jao, uske baad jao. Then I used to horse ride uske baad. So it's like completely wow. scheduled uske baad office ya fir any school activities. So it's like, yeah, it's like that. So I was never a riser earlier. So you got so you're an equestrian and you're a swimmer. That's that's some pretty cool news. Um, so do you live? Do you currently live with your family now, or are you living um, away from them? Or yeah, I am away from them. So they are in Chandigarh right now, and I'm putting up in Gurgaon. Okay. And yeah, in a PG. Yeah. Has that been challenging to be away from your family while all of this is happening? Somewhat. Yeah, yeah. It's a red zone area where I'm putting up, so it's like completely uh, locked down. Even the police PVR vans are around us, like so nobody is allowed to even leave our houses, even for the groceries. So it's wow. pretty much tough. So has it been a challenge at all, like um, like recording, performing, thinking of songs, or has it been pretty? Have you had a lot of privacy to kind of take your time and record whatever you want to do? Um, yeah, I sort of like I I prepared that song in my head, like okay, I'm singing this, and I used it three four times, and I record it, and yeah, like two to three times, then yeah, I come up with some perfect one. Cool. So one one interesting um, one interesting conversation I had before um, was with Kanika, and Kanika was mentioning something similar to kind of like kind of like me. I was um I was in a situation where I had like a family business and I was kind of grown up with a business background. Um, and I had a lot of opportunities to do things outside of music, but there was a part of me that was like, I don't want to look back 20 years from now and regret and wonder what if. So I know that, Kanika, I know that you had a lot of amazing opportunities. Tell me about that. Like, and, and what was the point where you were like, okay, I want to take music on and take this risk to be a musician for the rest of my life or for now or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I think because I grew up in like a corporate family where everybody was doing a job, um, it was sort of like in my mindset that that is what I have to progress towards. And my parents were very particular, you know, studying well, getting good grades. So they really loved music and they were the ones who actually made me start singing since I was five. But it was always for, you know, for your enjoyment or to build a skill or to, you know, show your passion somewhere. But I think even as I kept studying or working, I kept understanding music more and more. I kept interacting with musicians, the community even more. And I think when I was working, I sort of had that mindset where I knew that um, this is something that is really, it's, it's like calling to me or it's attracting me and it's making me really good. So I then like, took some time. I so here, here's the big question. So like, you know, being a part of a Desi family, most parents are not open minded to music, you know, they're, they're going to be like, nay, you must be an engineer, you must be a doctor, you must be a lawyer, yeah, yeah, get out. You know, it's like, I've seen a lot of that anyway, and that might not be the case for everybody. Um, I guess I was fortunate. So how was your family and your extended family when they heard that, oh my God, you have such an amazing job, you work for such an amazing firm, and Kanika, you're throwing it all away. Or was it like, no, beta, do, it, do what you're... No, no, it was. There was a bit of like, there wasn't like shouting at me or questioning me or anything, but there was like a discussion of sorts that do you know what you're doing? And the very fact that we don't know anybody in the industry, we don't know anyone in Bombay who can help you out. So how are you going to go about this? I think more than them being against it, it was them being worried that they don't know how to emotionally help. or career-wise support me through it. Mm -hmm. But I think what really helps is that I sort of made a plan and told them, okay, for the next six months is what I'm going to do so that they have some reassurance that uh, maybe, awesome. she has, uh, maybe she has it figured out <laughs> or is it she's trying. Hey, you know what? I, I'm the same boat as you. Um, and I think that it's, it's, great, better, yeah. it's better to take the risk than live with regret. And that was my whole philosophy. 
And um, it took a while, you know, like the first couple years of me doing music was the most challenging. And then all of a sudden, things just started to pick up. So hang in there. This is awesome. I'm, I'm so happy. And you know, one thing I can definitely say about your voice as well that I appreciate is that you do more than just singing. You actually are trying to emote through the voice, through the story, through the lyrics. And I can see it in your face. I can, and then it reflects in your voice. And I think that that's great that you continue to do that because music and songs and singing, it's all storytelling that the more you can emote through it and connect with people through telling them that story, I think it's going to help you in your career and make you even more of a successful singer. So I, I'm already recognized it. it's a great job that you're doing. Thank you so much. Sanika, you are one of the few that can sing English and Hindi and Mia as well that can sing Hindi and English so well and you guys cross over and you guys cross over so seamlessly. It's like, you know, throughout my life, you know, being an American, I've always heard folks from different countries singing in English and I'm like, ah, it's just not there. That accent just isn't right. But in this competition, I was completely blown away by the both of you. Like, how do you guys do it? Like, let me start with Sanika and then me. I want to hear from you. How do you guys like break down the language and then break down what, like, first of all, what do you prefer? Do you, do you enjoy singing Hindi more or English more? Uh, the thing is, lately there's been a lot of uh, remixes and all that, which I don't necessarily like in Hindi music. And I've always been more attracted towards slow songs rather than you know party songs and electronic or whatever so some classics from english i really enjoy singing and if i get that you know touch or if i connect to it then even hindi songs are really good for me um my dad's you prefer, always you prefer one over the other yeah i mean i like english songs a little more than hindi songs and then how do you and... navigate through the accent because um, like when, when you sang Dance Monkey, I was like, wow, you actually slammed it. Um, I watch a lot of English movies and series and all that. So you kind of just pick, off, uh, pick up on the accent, I guess. And even if you listen to the same song a lot of times, you understand how to pronounce it better. Okay. So that, that's, that's basically how. That's awesome. How about you, Mia? How, how was your... Like, do you prefer Hindi to English or do you other way around? And when you're sitting in your room or when you're at home, what's your default kind of music you listen to and who are your favorite artists? Um, for <clears> me, <throat> it really varies because, I mean, English is my first language. And I feel like I'm a bit of a linguist. I love languages and I feel like the accents contribute to what's special about that language. So I feel like really taking the time to understand it and to try your best to, you know, emulate it is what makes it special and adds to the flair that you have as, as a versatile musician or singer. And when it comes to artists that I listen to, it, it varies so much. I love listening to like snarky puppy like jazz or hiatus coyote with like neo soul or even like Sushila Raman, Esperanza Spalding, Ariana Grande. Like it really varies. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess that's where it comes from too. Just the fact that there are so many different kinds of musicians and different artists that I listen to that, you know, obviously influence me. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I was definitely digging your um, Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, Thanks. When, when it came on, I was like, yeah, and your, your setup, your background, your lighting. I mean, literally, like, I don't even know where you live. It seems like you live in some amazing place. <laughs> like, you have better lighting than I do. <laughs> it was a lot of... Um, what do you call it? Like my parents help out a lot. So, and because it's quarantine, it's my mom, my dad and I. So my mom is like doing the light. My dad is behind, you know, um, the camera trying to like shoot it and I'm there like dancing. And it's, it's really cool. I, I think it's um, one of the, the most memorable experiences that I'll take away, not just from this competition, but from all the recordings that I do is the fact that I get to spend so much time with uh, my family just trying to like mess around and you know still crack jokes and stuff like that are you are you is your family also into music or is it just you so it's just me my parents are super liberal they always push me to do music but here I am like you know I'm 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 super into music I love so happy that they've given me the opportunity to do it but I, I you know I'm still trying to figure myself out still trying to figure my life out but it is such a huge part of who I am that I'm so yeah. sure I'm 
I think, um, you know, I've heard a lot of singers. I've heard a lot of performers. I am myself one. And you're, I have to say, I connect with you as a musician, uh, probably, and it's hard to say the most because then there's, there's another part of me that, you know, because music for me was evolutionary. You know, it started off as, you know, this, this little kid living in a very small town in America where I would sing guzzles and kawalis. Now, who sings guzzles and kawalis that are American born? No one even listens to that stuff anymore. And then slowly I started to kind of come into something. And then five years I lived in India, I lived in Mumbai. And when I came to the industry, I realized that, you know, when I'm in India, everyone wants to be more Western rather than embracing the whole, the whole beauty of the, of like, you know, Indian music. And then I realized, I was like, well, you know, I have this extreme love for Desi music. I have this extreme love for English music how do I find that blend? And I think that's where you fall. You fall, you've fallen into this where you've authentically found your voice in English songs and authentically found your space in Daisy songs, but you are also quite different than the rest. And that's, I think this is why, um, this is why where we are right now. Unfortunately, this week, your votes didn't support the level of talent that I think you have. And unfortunately, um, I've, I've been in the same situation before too. I've been in these music competitions where I get voted on and a lot of times you know like I'll release something and I might think myself that my piece of music is good and then I'll hear somebody else and I'm like what was that but they have like millions of views and I think that you've kind of given me a little bit of clarity that sometimes people may just not be accustomed to something new they might not even be ready for it you might be ahead of the game so in a, in a way, um, this, it's not a negative thing. Like, because if it was me, I would have voted for you last round, but listen to the rest of vote. It's not that. So it's almost hard for me to even say like, you know, can the people be right? Can they be wrong? Is it just their preference? There's no right. There's no wrong One thing. Sure. Is you're a hell of a musician. <laughs> that, that um, at, is your dad happen to be there with you? No, no, he's not. But because uh. one of the things that we we had was when this when the episode first came on, and your you and your dad um, yeah. kind of started off the episode with you guys. We had so many comments that how cute your dad was and how awesome you guys were, and I thought maybe if he was there, he'd get to say hello as well. But dude, I I mean I I just want to let you know that you're unbelievably talented. Do not allow this to discourage you one bit take as much out of this as you can so tell people right now where can they find you um what's the best place to follow you and and share whatever you want to share um, with them well you can find me on youtube at mia sings they can find me on facebook at mia makes music and on instagram it's mia underscore sings so that's where they can find me and i'm so i'm so thankful that you know you've given not just me but all of us this opportunity and i think it's, it's a huge deal, honestly, to be someone who's so selfless and willing to give a lot of people the chance to do what they love and to really try for something that they wouldn't otherwise do. So like, props to you, honestly, for, you. for starting this off. Because I don't think I would have ended up listening to all these amazing musicians who do such unique things. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. So Yeah, I like, appreciate it. I appreciate it. And, and it was, it was really eye opening for me too. You know, I, to think that I didn't gain something, I definitely gained something. Now you and I are going to be, be, in, yeah. be following you as well. Uh, you know, it opens doors, it opens things. And, and if there's anything I can do to help you along the way, always feel free to reach out to me. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. That, that really means a lot, like to have your support. Absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, the unbelievably talented Mia sadly will not be carrying on with us, but if you're cool with it, mm -hmm. um, we would love to have um, you have one more time to sing for everyone. So the song that I'm playing is a very special song that I wrote. Um, you wrote. It's, yes, I, I, I love writing songs. It's, it's pretty fun. So, um, yeah, basically this song, actually, I don't know if I want to do this song. This is nice. Okay, my mother is reassuring me saying this is nice. Song. <laughs> okay. But um, basically the song is called Break Up With Me. And 
it's it's very interesting because it was inspired by me watching vampire diaries so it's <laughs> it's, it's complicated it's it's complicated when you think about it but yeah let me just play it for you so kind awesome. of clear i can't wait you said you don't smoke said you don't think you said you don't cry unless it breaks your heart and the water was cold and it fell through my soul but it told me it's better tomorrow the sunrise i love said it's good to come up and it told me that you were gone the life will go on, don't worry too long And maybe if you were somebody else I'd like more oh, oh, oh. Cause you broke up with me And we weren't even together And I thought that this would never happen Broke up with me And you stole a piece of my heart Cause you broke up with me And we weren't even together And I thought that this would never happen Broke up with me And you stole a piece you said you don't lie, then nobody cries you up. You said you don't lose unless you find out of luck. And I thought that by then we'd be more than friends, but to you, we were never for each other. And I cried in the night, love struck and so fine Just hoping you see the pretty colors Of my hand on yours and your heart on mine And maybe if you like me back, I would not need to Oh, oh, cause you broke up with me And we weren't even together and I thought that this would never happen you Broke up with me and you stole a piece of my heart Cause you broke up with me even together, and I thought that this would never happen. Broke up with me, so it's in my heart. Yeah, <laughs> yo, and you got songwriting skills. You've got so much. How old are you, by the way? I am 17. <laughs> The amount that you have the potential to contribute to the world is phenomenal. So I'm gonna leave you with that and I'm gonna be looking out for you. I'm gonna be in touch with you. I hope that one day that you'll write a song for me. And for that sure, anytime, anytime, honestly. I would absolutely, I, you've got the skill, you've got the talent. I relate to you on a musical level. I, I would love to work with you one day. Same, that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much. This, this really means a lot, like I said, but thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you so much for being a part of this show. It's been unbelievable. It's just the beginning. There's so many amazing things ahead of way. Stay in touch. I'm you when you need me. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And there you have it. Praveen, once again, has prevailed. And he is the Sofa Star of the Week. Congratulations, Praveen. And if it wasn't for you guys and all of your voting, he would not have made it there. That brings me to the next thing. Each and every one of you has a responsibility. And that is, if you're watching this show, to please vote. There's a lot of people I know that think that their one vote isn't gonna count. But if you count up all those one votes, it could make the difference between somebody winning and someone getting eliminated. So for those of you that are watching, please do tune in this Thursday and vote for your favorites. It could be the difference between them going home. Well, they're already technically home, but moving on with the Sofa Star and potentially being crowned the Sofa Star. Until then, I'm your host, Jeffrey Iqbal, and I will catch you this Thursday at 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of The Sofa Star. Mwah!